All right, we're going to study a couple cases in valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. The first molecule we're going to look at is carbon dioxide, or CO2. If we draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide, it's going to look something like this. The first thing we want to do when determining the structure for carbon dioxide is determine the steric number which is going to be the number of atoms attached to our central atom plus the number of lone pair electrons on the central atom. So X is going to stand for the number of atoms attached to our central carbon. That's going to be 2. And we're going to add to that the number of lone pair electrons on our central carbon, which there's none of them. So our steric number is 2. And when we have two atoms attached to a central atom with a steric number of two, the way that those bond pairs, which are represented by these blue bonds, they go 180 degrees from one another, and we showed that in a, in a different video. But nevertheless, we would call this particular structure a linear molecular structure. And, of course, the angle between these uh, three atoms would, would make 120, uh, excuse me, 180 degrees. It's a, it's a full line. The next molecule we're going to look at is formaldehyde, CH2O. Its Lewis structure looks like this. And if we determine the steric number, for our central carbon. That's going to be the number of atoms attached to this central carbon. That stands for X. Plus the number of lone pair electrons on our central carbon. And if we do our math here, we have three atoms attached to our central carbon. Two hydrogens and an oxygen. And our central carbon has no lone pairs for a steric number of three. And of course in a steric number of three, with all three atoms attached, what you end up getting is a structure that looks like this, in which the atoms are oriented at 100 and, uh, 120 degrees from one another, and all of those atoms are going to lie in the same plane. Those atoms lie at the corners of an equilateral triangle, and this arrangement is called a trigonal or triangular planar arrangement. And of course, that's going to be the described structure of this particular molecule, trigonal planar. And the trigonal planar angle is 120 degrees, 120 degree angle here. Now there's, a, there's another case that can exist for a steric number of three. For example, we can look at the molecule SO2, sulfur dioxide. And if we were to draw the uh, Lewis structure for sulfur dioxide, it would look something like this. If we calculate the steric number for the sulfur in this particular molecule, we're going to take our steric number. That's going to be the number of atoms attached to our central atom, which is 2. And our number of lone pair electrons on the sulfur, which is 1. That also gives us a steric number of 3. In this case, we're going to represent the structure by this where these two white spheres are going to represent the oxygen atoms, and this black sphere is going to represent the sulfur atom. And this sort of loop here, this styrofoam loop, or this foam loop, is going to represent the lone pair of electrons. And you notice, once again, these regions of electron density, the bond pairs and the lone pairs, they orient themselves at roughly 120 degrees from one another. They point to the corners of an equilateral triangle. And we call this arrangement of electrons, we call this orientation with a steric number of three, we still call it a trigonal planar arrangement. However, this molecule, we do not describe this molecule as being a trigonal planar structure. What we do when we're describing the molecule is what we really want to look at is how do the atoms in the molecule orient themselves to one another. And in a sense, we just ignore the lone pair. And if I just look at this molecule without the lone pair on it, it looks, it looks bent. It looks like a, a bent structure. And so that's what we call this molecule. This molecule has a bent 
molecular structure. Now you may have heard me say that these bond angles aren't quite 120 degrees and that's because the lone pair of electrons is freer to move in space and because of that because of that freedom to move they exert a little more repulsion on the bond pairs which are localized in space so these lone pairs exert a little more repulsion on the bond pairs than the bond pairs do on each other and because of that when you get lone pairs that sort of uh, causes an electronic repulsion that forces this angle to be a little bit smaller than 120 degrees and so we'd say the bond angle in this bent structure is a little less than 120 degrees and the oxygen sulfur oxygen bond angle in sulfur uh, dioxide turns out to be about 119 degrees